Start recording. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Welcome to another Blackout Men podcast. Uh, usually I'll pop up, but unfortunately I'm not. I'm working off a uh, off of a different computer, so unfortunately I don't have my camera set up. But sometimes this is good, though. This this is good too. I mean, you know, I don't have to necessarily, you know come on the video to you know talk about what's on my mind i could just pick up the mic and literally talk what's on my mind and then today's topics man today's topics right quick we're going to talk about pockets being slashed pockets being slashed truck drivers pockets are being slashed right now in the midst of a pandemic of all things drivers owner operators independent contractors are being mushed in the face right now i found a couple of videos that uh that that i want to play and uh and talk about they getting they getting fucked they getting messed up in the pocket Let's talk about it right now. Let's talk about it. Let's, it's 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 a sad state of 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 trucking right now. Sad 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 state of trucking right now. If you're an owner operator or an independent contractor, I, I, you know at, at first I at first I came on back in the day and I was like, look. You guys just take what y'all can get and just keep on rolling and just wait until this pandemic is over and maybe it'll get better. But this is the time where it should just get better because there's a lot of freight that needs to be moved. But a lot of brokers are are going into these driver's pockets. It's sad. And I, you know, and and that's why a lot of these, a lot of these drivers that's coming on, that's making these videos, making these YouTube videos, they all saying the same thing. If you're thinking about getting a truck right now, right now in 2020, it's it's not even worth it because the money, the money is not there. The money is just not there. It's, it's a sad state of a of emergency right now. A lot of truck drivers are getting together to do a coalition to make it to go to the White House so they can protest the the, the freight rates that these brokers, these brokers are are offering these truck drivers, man. It's it's fucked up right now. It's fucked up. I came across this I came across this one video in uh in Facebook from uh from from a post. And he said that he received a lot of criticism for the last video because the last video that he put up he said that look man, we're getting fucked out here. And a lot of people over here saying, No, we're not. No, we're not. We're not getting fucked. We're not getting fucked at all. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. And here's the proof. Here's the proof. Hold on right quick. I'm trying to trying to get it up for you guys. So give me a second. 
It's, it's Facebook over here saying lockout. You you about to spill the you about to spill the truth, and we we can't let you do that. We 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 gonna fuck with the video that you're trying to get up. Come on now. Here we go. Hold on, right quick. Two, four, three. Okay, so in this video, in in this uh in this sound clip right here, you guys about to hear uh an independent operator uh making a bid for freight. That's he's up in the north. He sounds like he's up in the east, northeast, and the freight is going down to Florida. Now, this is way now Florida, way before Florida, uh, before this pandemic even even going on right now. Florida has always been trash for for freight coming out of Florida. I got down. I I did a couple of Florida runs. And when I got down there, I sat at least maybe about a day. And when I was with U.S. Express, I sat for about for about two and a half days. I, I did an actual thirty four down there. All I needed was some was my was my swim trunks, and I could have I could have parked the truck, went over to Orlando, and went over to uh, went over to uh, uh, the, the 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 amusement park. That's that's how long I was stuck in Florida. Now Florida, like they said, Florida. I, at first, I didn't believe it because when I when I got the miles to go down to Florida when I was with U.S. Express, it was about fifteen hundred fifteen hundred miles down there. It's like fuck, hell yeah, fifteen hundred miles, and then fifteen hundred miles back. That's about three thousand. And I was like, cool, let me get it. I'll go. I get down there, and the fifteen hundred miles was only on the one check. The other fifteen hundred to get back up out of there was on it was on the following check. That shit was crazy. It was crazy. So that's why a lot of these a lot of companies don't like hiring out of Florida because they they get they would get a route down there you know but it's it's always hard to get back up out of Florida. You always have to buy or you always have to deadhead literally up out of Florida to get uh to get a load. So check out check check this out and listen and pay attention, man, because uh, I'm I'm for real. <laughs> I'm for real. I I didn't realize this was going on until I actually came across these two videos. Check it out. We won't get nothing going out of Florida. So this morning, speaking of Landis. Good morning. I was going about that Reading PA to Fort Myers, Florida. Okay, it's five stops on that one, sir. Look. Now, Reading, PA, to Fort Myers, Florida. This is all on the East Coast. You pick up in PA, and you drop off in Florida. But along the route, now listen, though. Along the route is five stops, meaning that he has to, he has to stop at each, each one of these shippers. So no telling how long it's going to take them to load him. Okay, how long it's going to take them to load him? How long it's going to get there? You see what I'm saying? Check it out. Was out of my facility today, 1 p.m. to 11 p.m. in Reading. Uh, first stop on the way down is in Pineville, South Carolina. It's first come, first serve, seven to three thirty. Okay. All right, looking for tomorrow on that. Then you go to Deed City, Florida. First come, first serve, eight to four. Okay. Then I got Riverview, Florida. They are a 10 a.m. to noon window. Okay. Then I go to Sarasota, Florida, nine to four. Okay. And Fort Myers is also eight to four, first come, first serve. Okay. Uh, PC Milers got me at 1,161 miles. Okay. I actually showed 1,231 loaded. Okay. 1,231. What's your rate? Our rate is twelve fifty to the truck. So going to Florida, you guys are paying almost a dollar a mile now. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Going right off mm. with that answer. Why? Because that's what 
going right is. Mm. That's, uh, you know, that would be considered my head hole since I'm out of the Northeast going to Florida. Are you paying for the stops? We have 1250 is our total rate on this, sir. Have a good day. Almost a dollar and some change a mile to 1200. Now, mind you, somebody, somebody going to take it. Somebody hungry. Somebody thirsty. Somebody, somebody's going to take that load. But this guy right here, he's looking at the big picture. He's looking at, he's looking at the picture that, hey, I'm not going to make no money. You know, I got, I got, I, I got the fuel to contend with. And you're not even paying for the stops? Listen to what he say. Let's, let me back it up. Listen to what he say. He's not even paying for the stops. 161 miles. Okay, I actually showed twelve thirty one loaded. Okay, twelve thirty one. What's your rate? Our rate is twelve fifty to the truck. So going to Florida, you guys are paying almost a dollar a mile now. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Going right off with that answer. Why? Because that's what the going rate right is. That's uh, you know that would be considered my head haul since I'm out of the Northeast going to Florida. Are you paying for the stops? We have twelve fifty is our total rate on this. Sir. Have a good day. 1250 is the total rate wolf coming coming out of the northeast coming out of PA heading down to Florida with five stops or five drops in Florida now not not even not to mention not to mention the time that's going to take to unload when he gets down there not even the time while he's picking up not even the time to 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 load twelve fifty one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars not not including his fuel not not for the and even going down to Florida listen to what he says about going down to Florida let me see if I can back it up so we have to charge a really good amount to go into Florida hold on Listen to what he says about Florida. Let's see. Let's see. Lakeland, Florida. It's called going to Florida. Now, here's the thing. A lot of companies don't like going to Florida because we can never get any freight out of Florida. Mm -hmm. So we have to charge a really good amount to go into Florida. Uh, that load was just taken down. Let's call. There we go. Let's call this one. Now, going into Florida, like he said, you got to charge a really good rate going into Florida because there's shit coming out of Florida. These brokers, man, I, I did not realize how cutthroat these brokers really are. I, I, I never understood and never realized how cutthroat these brokers really are. So, guys, I mean, now, now that you're hearing this, now that you're hearing this, are you still interested in buying a truck? Are you still interested in leasing a truck? It's showing, it's, it's showing and proving, especially in this pandemic right now, that buying a truck is not the way to go. It's not the way to go. They're getting a coalition together to go to uh to go to uh to washington dc this coming monday well not this coming monday i think it's i think it's a well huh. he said that he want to go to dc D -d -d these freights though that's that's why truckers owner operators are 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 protesting in houston stopping traffic try, make making their way to washington dc to mention to say what they have to say about these cheap ass freights rates you and you just heard the guy one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars now you figure you you know I watched this TV show called uh, Shipping Wars, 
and by me on the outside looking in, it's an it's exciting. It's exciting. It's about like four, about five people making a bid on on um on the on what they want to get up. They they you know somebody will start the bid at a thousand dollars and then they'll chop it. They'll chop it, chop it, chop, 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 chop it all the way down to like fifteen hundred, a thousand. And some of that shit ain't even worth it, even though that this is a TV series and they get paid by the producers. They get paid more by the producers. But that's just the offset of showing you of how cutthroat everybody is to to bid on freight. All right, here you go. All right, I found I I found one. They about to they about to bid on this uh seven day run from Florida to Las Vegas. All right, now they about to bid on they they about to bid on this and let's see what they chop this down to. Golf clubs are pop metal, man. This isn't a big steel structure. Now All right, gonna... so Mark started the bidding off at forty three. Hundred dollars. I have to be treated, you know, pretty gingerly. Costing probably about eight hundred dollars to rent a flatbed plus gas, five to eight hundred dollars. And we're looking at almost two grand right there. Jennifer dropped it down to four thousand, uh, considering how much she has to uh, put into it. I'm gonna go thirty-five hundred. That'll be. Now Jared, he dropped it down to thirty-five hundred. Now, mind you, Mark had it up at forty-five. This, this is the cutthroat. Now, this is bidding between between the 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 shipping guys, the guys that are actually going to take it. But this gives you an idea on on what's going on in the real world. Be plenty of money to cover a rental trailer. It's only eight foot long, thirty feet left on the trailer. Get him out of the picture. Thirty-three hundred is getting. Chris dropped it down to 3300 Pretty skinny. It's just over a dollar a mile. Now, hold on. Ray, Ray, what you, what you say? Let's go back to what you say, Ray. What, what did you say? Hold on, Ray. Hold on. I got to get back to Ray. Or not Ray, Roy. Here you go. Feet left on the trailer. Get him out of the picture. 3300 is getting pretty skinny. It's just over a dollar a mile. Could be. Now. Roy just actually said it was over a dollar a mile. Now, now they dropped it down from forty five hundred down to thirty one hundred. Thirty one hundred for a seven day run. Let me uh, let me see who actually won this bid. Knock him out with two grand, baby. I'm out. Seven day run. Includes fuel, they got to rent a trailer, and a couple of other things. But considering the fact that they are running out of a, a Ford F-150 or a Ford F-350, probably cheap for them, but imagine if that was a semi. Now, the semi driver, Mark, started at $4,500. And this is the cutthroat. This is the cutthroat right here. Two thousand dollars for a seven day run. I'm just saying, man. I'm I'm just saying. All right, so we're gonna listen to another uh independent operator. Um he's gonna come in and and speak uh speak on on the rates for him and he's gonna delve a little bit deeper into uh, what's going on? What's really going on out here? Independent owner operator, in which I have a million dollars worth of insurance, cargo insurance to haul any loads that that I can find on a load board or going through a uh, actual shipper. Now, what happens is a lot of these shippers deal with uh, brokerage companies, which then turn around and take a certain amount of money off the top of the money that they offer you. And it's gotten so bad right now where we're supposed to be the forefront of what's going on in America and moving America and making sure that products and, and store shelves are stocked 
so that people could have food to eat and, you know, just medical supplies and stuff like that. Well, right now, being that there's so many people sick in these warehouses and these warehouses can't get this, this freight out or have this freight come in, there's a shortage of loads to be moved. So what does the brokers do? They turn around and they cut your throat. I had a broker just this morning where they had a trailer that needed to be moved from New Jersey down to Sutherland, Virginia. I put in a bid of uh, 1380 to move the load down there where I would, I would. Uh, it's, it's called a power only load where I take their trailer, I bring it to Virginia, I drop it, and then I take my tractor and I either come home or find me another trailer to bring it back. Well, this particular broker puts down zero. He doesn't want to pay anything. He just wants you to pick up the trailer and take it and just drop it off. Zero. So you want me to work for free? That's what you're saying? You, you want me to power only your load down to Virginia for free? Zero? After, after he just put in a bid of $1,380? Zero? What what is what is that about? I once had a broker in the same company, JB Hunt, where I picked up a load or that I, I did a rate confirmation. A rate confirmation is an agreement between you and the brokerage company telling you to go pick up a load what time it needs to be picked. Yeah, I, I got yeah, I, I had to wait for rate cons a lot. Um my fleet manager would call me up, let me know. He said, hey, lockout, you got a you got a load that's coming out of such and such and this going down to such and such. But um, I was, I'd be like, OK, well, send me the information so I can make my way to it. And he'd be like, well, no, we, we got to wait for a rate con. So that's the agreement between the companies of if you're going to take their freight or not. Picked up where it needs to be picked up. And the amount of money that you're going to charge them to do the actual load. Well, I'm on my way there, halfway there. And the broker calls and says, oh, the load got canceled. Okay, no problem. Well, just send me a truck order not used, meaning that you're going to pay me for my time and energy to go pick this load up. And he tells me, well, you're not on site, so we're not going to pay you. So it goes. That's cut right there, man. That, 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 and that's how and that's how they get treated. That's that's how. They get treated. Now, as a company driver, such as myself, I don't see all of that. I don't see all of that. We if we get if we get a load that canceled, we just we just go on to to the next spot. You know, we we already you know, we'll get paid for whatever time or whatever the case. And in a, and in a lot of instances, we don't get paid. We be on our way to pick up the load. We get there and boom. We, we we don't get no detention time. We don't get no layover time. We don't get nothing. That that time is lost. That time is lost. And then we got to waste more time to find for them to find us another load. And in trying times like this, loads, like he said, it's hard to come by. So being an owner, operator, independent contractor, time is is what you don't have to. You, you you don't have time is money you waste time you wasting money and time you can't waste around and around and you know i could use some other methods of getting this 150 dollars but because you're an independent owner operating 150 dollars that's all he's asking for, and 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 this company is refusing to give him a hundred and fifty dollars for his time. Time, you can't give me a hundred and fifty dollars. I was on my way to get the load, and it, it it canceled. It's not my fault. It's not my fault that the load canceled. Is it? Is it my fault that the load canceled? Did I get there late? Did 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 something happen? No, they cancel, and you can't give me one hundred and fifty dollars for my for my time. You're constantly looking for work and loads to uh, move and pay your bills. You don't have time to do it. So basically, I gave him some blessed words and moved on. But this is the kind of nonsense that independent truck drivers and owner operators are going through. We have high overhead. You have some guys paying 
uh, fifteen, eighteen hundred dollars a month truck payments. You got another, say, a thousand dollars worth of truck insurance. You're paying tolls. You're paying tolls. what they call now the ELD, electronical logging devices. And you have to pay a monthly subscription that may be forty-five dollars a month. Then you're paying what they call the International Fuel Tax Association, where you're paying for every time that truck moves, a truck driver has to pay. We're recording the miles that we. All I'm hearing is dollar signs. All I'm hearing is cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. That's all I'm hearing. And this is all coming out of the driver's pockets, the owner-operator pockets. This is what we don't see. So my question to you guys that's still interested in getting your own trucks, do you, do you want to get your own truck? <laughs> is it worth getting your own truck in 2020? During this pandemic right now, where rates is less than a dollar a mile, that's not even enough to pay the truck payment. We do in each state and we have to pay taxes on that money. Then you have you have places where we go sometimes where when we back into a door, or let me back up a little bit. Sometimes we can go to warehouses that somebody ordered something. Right. I pull up to the gate and they got a gate there with a guy in there saying, hey, drive is $30 just to get inside the gate. To deliver. $30 just to get inside of the gate to get to where he needs to go. Cha-ching. This is money coming out of their pockets that they even that they don't even have in their pockets yet. And you got to include what he just said. You got to include all of that. In the rate that you bid in on, so that you can at least make a dollar. Deliver the freight that they ordered. Sometimes it's even more than that. And perfect example is Hunts Point Market up here in New York. I think it's like $35, $40 to get inside the gate. Then once you get to the customer who ordered the stuff, you back into the door, he looks inside the trailer and say, oh, okay, it's going to cost you four or $500 to offload the load. So you constantly got people that are ripping truck drivers off, that are constantly that's in their going, pockets. That's going in their pockets, eating in their pockets. $1,200. $1,250, not including the stops, not including the time. That's that's how much that's how much these owner operators and independent contractors are getting. And nobody wants to pay a fair wage for what we're doing. And you got you got thousands on thousands of drivers getting out of the business because they can no longer hang on to trying to hold on to this big monster of all these monster bills that we have but everybody's taking advantage of us because they don't want to pay and because the trucking industry has so many trucks where you hear all the time guys saying or on television that there's not enough truck drivers, there's not enough trucks where we're trying to recruit drivers and do this and do that. Listen, there's more truck drivers than you can shake a stick at. On that note, man, on that note, I, I agree with him. You, you hear, you hear every time that there is a driver shortage there's a driver shortage. Every every article, every video, every news report. But there is a truck driver shortage right now, and by the end of two, uh, by the end of twenty twenty twenty, there will be an X amount of driver shortages out here. I agree with this dude. There's a lot of drivers. There, there, there ain't no fucking driver shortage. Forget that. Whoever says that there's a driver shortage, don't believe them. You you gotta dig. You gotta dig a little deeper, a, below the surface, to see that there is plenty of drivers out here. Not only not only plenty of drivers that's out here, but plenty of 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 potential drivers that's coming into the game every week, every week. You got you got companies like Stevens Transport that has their own uh, trucking school. 
that's bringing in about 30 drivers and weaving them, weaving them drivers out, you know, out of 30, maybe about 15, maybe about 10. But you got them coming in every week. You got companies like Prime that's coming in every week. Drivers coming in every week. Now, of course, with this pandemic that's going on, they're not bringing in as many drivers that they used to bring in. Back then, about 30, 40 a class. Now you got maybe about five. You Maybe you got about 10, you know, at the least. But they still bringing them in, though. Every week. Every week. Go to Facebook. Go to these trucking groups. Go to, go to these trucking groups. In all these trucking groups, you got somebody in there. Yay, I got my CDLs with the S on the end. I got my CDLs. Yay, I got my CDLs. And I'm about to get on out. And then you got other you got other potentials that's in the that's in the same group. Hey, I'm about to start class uh next month. Yay, I'm about to start class. I'm about to go and get my CDLs. Truck driver shortage? Where? Where is the truck driver shortage at? Now, there is some drivers, some old school drivers that are getting out of the game. Yes, you got some old school drivers that been doing it for 30 years and they about to hand their keys up. But that's only far and few between because they still out here. They still out here. Now they can they can retire, they retire and still drive. They don't drive as much though. Truck driver shortage, where is the truck driver shortage? I I don't see it in America. I don't, I don't see it in America. Especially when you got drivers all over the world, when you got drivers, potential drivers all over the world that's calling in Yo, how do I how do I go by getting my CDLs? Who do I find that'll pay for my CDLs? What what trucking school should I go to get my CDLs? It's crazy. It, it ain't no shortage. Whoever tells you that there's a shortage, don't believe them. Don't believe them. You know what I'm saying? Don't believe them. And and as far as getting and as far as you guys. That's coming into the game that's saying, yo, I'm about to go and get my own truck because I can make more money. I I just I just played you two uh I just played you two videos from two different dudes that's telling you that what they have to go through to 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 fight for a fair and honest wage. And then, like I said, I even played you that little snippet from uh, Shipping Wars and how they how they be chopping chopping it down. So you you got to think, you know, owning a truck is just not just a matter of owning a truck. You got to treat that as a business. As a matter of fact, uh, a lady friend of mine, she just recently brought her truck. So I'm about to I'm about to get her on the podcast uh, probably tomorrow and chop it up with her and and find out how you know what was her experience going through you know getting in her truck you know but um it's crazy it's crazy so you now don't get me wrong okay uh, look this is just from a couple of guys now there is some dudes out there there's some drivers out there that's going to tell you different Oh yeah, the freight, the freight is there. We making money. We getting two dollars, three dollars a mile, five dollars a mile. We we getting it. I don't know what they talking about. They talking about that's that's just them. That's them. That's they talking about. That's what's happening to them. They they probably might not getting. They probably might not be getting with the with the right people, with the right brokers, with the with the with the right contacts. Okay, then who you going through? Don't don't be stingy. Don't be stingy. Tell me who you going through. I uh, <laughs> let, let me know who you going through so I can so I can get where you at, bruh. So I can so I can get on your level. 
but of course there's a lot of there's a lot of truck drivers out there that don't want you on their level they they want to see you down they want to see you struggle they don't want to they don't want to give you a handout they don't want to extend a hand they want to make they want to come on and make videos and say yo look at look at me look at how much money i'm making i'm still i'm still rolling i'm still making my money i'm still this i'm still that i don't know where y'all coming from i'm i'm still this i'm still that instead of coming in here bragging bruh why don't you let me know where we at where you at so i can get where you at man Help us out. We're supposed to be in the same game. We're supposed to be truckers. We're supposed to be brothers united. And that's where the underlying problem lies. Unity. There is none in the trucking industry. There is none. There probably was back in the day, but there is none now. There is none. There's no unity. There's a lot of groups on Facebook that's trying to that's trying to get people to come together and they and they don't want to do that. They just want to be there just to be a picture on a wall. You trying to get you try to get organized, you trying to get an organization. We try to get this group going, but nobody want to chip in they just want to be there for the they just want to be there for the meeting oh i was there at the meeting i just want to represent uh represent this group and represent that group but nobody ain't making ain't nobody making no changes no forward motion no forward progress none because there is no unity amongst nobody maybe unity in the one group maybe maybe you will see unity in 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 other in in other races in other national nationalities you got a lot of you got a lot of people and especially in one nationality and i don't want to bring it up because i don't want to put a debate out on it but i will say this there's only a few and only a few that's in one particular nationality that may come together to start something, but it's hard for them to come together. Now you got other nationalities that puts their head together and be like, boom, let's do it. Let me give this example. All right. Let me let me put let me put this example out here. One nationality wants to wants to walk around in Jordans, Louis Vuittons, uh true religions. Uh, you know, those those expensive stuff, but they broke. They don't have no money. They don't have no money in the bank. They don't have no savings. They don't have no investments. They don't have nothing. They just want to show and floss and all like that. While you got the other nationality that's walking around looking like a bum. And you and you'll talk about them like, oh man, look at that bum right there. He's looking all pitiful and all like that. But realize this: that bum got money in the bank. That bum got six figures. That bum got cars in the in 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 the uh in in the garage. Just because you see him driving driving a a a a, a, a two the uh. Uh, a 1989 Toyota doesn't mean that that dude don't have no cheese in the bank. Now, when he has to dress up, he'll dress up and he'll he'll dress up and flip the script on your ass. But to save his money, that's what he's doing. He bank it. While the other nationality, when they get money, when they get cheese, they get uh they they like to floss. They like to floss. So before I get on up out of here, I want to make a, I want to prove that flossing don't pay. Hold on. Okay, I'm back. So here's a good good example. Now I can't even tell if this was I can't even tell if if this was either stage or was it for real. But you don't do shit like this. You do not do shit like this okay you don't do shit like this
<laughs> Hold on, we gotta see that again. We gotta see that again. I wish I could slow this. Hold on, I, hold up. <laughs> that nigga came in. Look at that nigga came in with both hands. Look at that. Ooh, give me that money. <laughs> See, that's what I proved my point. I proved my point. All right. Prove my point. A lot of shit that you don't need to do. <laughs> you don't need to do that. That stimulus check. Going in the wind. And on that note, you guys, yo, if you like content like this and more, Thank first first thing first. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. I appreciate all you guys being here. Um I appreciate all you guys being here and all like that, man. You guys, you guys are freaking awesome. You know what I'm saying? You guys are freaking awesome. If you like content like this and more, man, make sure you like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more. And make sure you hit that all button when you when you subscribe, all right? All right. So I want to thank all of you, man. I appreciate you. I really, really do. I really do, man. And don't forget to check out all the new, all the interviews. It's in a, it's in a playlist over over a hundred i'm i'm over i'm i'm getting it's like i talked to a hundred people so far man i can't believe that i cannot believe that i talked to almost a hundred people man that's crazy that is crazy you know so thank you to everybody that made that a success um make sure you check out the interview that i got with everett tomorrow you know that'll be posted up tomorrow um uh, come back next week next sunday i'll have another chop up session i think that's what i'm gonna call it chop up i'm gonna have another chop up session with you guys next sunday you know where you guys can come in and call me and uh chop it up with me we can talk about any topics or anything like that man it doesn't doesn't necessarily have to be about trucking but um yo i appreciate all you guys man thank you thank you thank you for your subscriptions for whatever whatever all right so mm, i like that music in the background man That's, mm. and on that note we are gone yeah we are gone Woo! Mm. we 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 are Mm. Go on. All right, y'all. Y'all have a blessed one. Peace.